Mbobe. I am a Form 4 student at Kikin High School, and probably as per my badge, you can see that I am the head of the school, but soon to be retired because I am in Form 4, and so I need to be concentrating on my exams. But I am very delighted to be here this morning. Um, it is my joy to come and address a crowd of people that are interested and take matters of children at heart, just like I am. I am the former speaker of the Kenya Children's Assembly, and I am currently one of the international girls advocates in the nation, let me say that. And um, I have worked with several organizations. I have worked with the government under the Kenya Children's Assembly. I have worked with Plan International and the NGOs. I have worked with Kenya Alliance for the Advancement of Children's Rights, Save Kenya, Save the Children. I have worked with such organizations. And so I like to believe that I am very enlightened on matters pertaining to children. So this morning, I am here to talk about the major theme, which is all about accelerating um, empowerment for children, protection, and equal opportunities for children in Africa, especially by 2030. Um, you see, currently we are moving to the, the world where children are the ones that are going to be driving our economy. Let me say these are the people that are holding our economies in a few years to come. And so if they don't get the kind of protection that they need, if they don't get what they need, the kind of, the kind of food they, they need, the kind of health care they need, the kind of education that they need, then we definitely know that we are in for it because our country, our nations, our Africa, our world is in for a big shock. Because the direction in which our world is taking wants people that can be able to grab opportunities and run with them. And the only way you can be able to grab an opportunity is when you are prepared for it. And how do we prepare children to be able to run with these opportunities when the right time comes for them? All of it has been stated. I think I came in a bit late, but I would have wanted to come a bit earlier because the session seemed very, very interesting. Because you see, the kinds of curriculum we are having in the country, the kinds of policies we are putting in place, one factor that should be majorly considered is, is this, whatever we are putting in place, is it going to be for the sole purpose of the children? Is it in their best interest? And that is what they are to they're all talking about everywhere. That is a song that is being sung. Is an organization, when you are beginning an organization, are you creating a friendly environment for children? Because you see, we are vulnerable. I am still below 18, but I'm turning 18 in about 65 days. But, <laughs> so, but considering the fact that I am a child as at now, then let me talk about being a child before I graduate to the next age. Because at least when I still have the voice to talk for them, let me use it as at now. Well, when I have worked with organizations, most of the time, it is even very difficult for Kina Zipporah to get me. Because one thing they have to do is they have to get permission from the ministry, through the DO's office and the district office, then through my school, then my mom has to automatically give the last consent. If she says I am not coming, then I am not coming. So we should actually clap for her that she said I will come. <laughs> so you see, children are not just the parents' responsibility. Children are an entire community's responsibility. Because without those key stakeholders, that is the DO's office, the DC's office, my mom, my school, then there would be no me standing here today. This is only to show you that taking care of children doesn't, it warrants for an effort which is collusive from everyone else. That is why matters of child protection should not just be left for NGOs and government. Because children belong to the entire community. And if we definitely want to empower these children so that by the year 2030, we are already starting to see changes, not only in Kenya, but in the entire Africa and in the entire world, then we should begin as at now. That is why I am, I am very happy that the government is taking so much so much steps, the government is putting in a lot of their funds to make sure that children are getting the environment that they require for their better growth and development. You know about the Children's Act, which was um, ratified in 2004. This
has everything pertaining to children. And it's not just that. Kenya actually works with other documents such as the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, together with the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of Children. These are documents that have been put in place, in fact policies, that have been put in place by not only Kenyan government, but even other international countries, so that they can be able to take care of children. If governments are taking such a responsibility, what about you as an individual? Let's narrow it down to us as individuals. What are we doing to ensure that we are creating a safe space for our children? Do you provide the kind of home where the child is afraid of coming back home? Because they know that at the end of the day, when I get back home, I will be beaten and just by, if something is missing in the house, then it automatically means that I am the one who took it. And if I am the one who took it, I will not get a meal, I will sleep outside. Are we using methods for correcting children, but for disciplining them by correcting them, but not inflicting pain? We have to move from that kind of we have to move from that kind of thinking where we think that beating children is the best way of correcting them. Now you You know, in Africa we know that kuchapa you don't beat children, you beat them across so that it can come out. But one thing I know is if you want to correct a child, the best way is to actually let them know they have made the mistake. Sit them down. Because you know, these children are very bright. Nowadays, children are very bright. By a very young age, they already know how to differentiate between right and wrong. And they can listen. And they can listen so that they can be able to synthesize what you're saying. So sit them down and tell them what you have done is wrong. And if it, and it is wrong, so automatically you have done something wrong, I need to give you a punishment. The punishment doesn't necessarily have to come in form of slaps and caning. You can give them work in the house. Tell them, I'm punishing you for an entire week, you'll be the one washing dishes. And trust you me, the child will learn from that correction. We need to move to better methods of correction so that we don't raise violent children. Because even them, when they grow up, they have been used to being beaten. They will transfer the same and it will become a ripple effect. This will continue if we don't start handling them at least young stages of these children. So parents are a very, very important, a very important part of their children's development in this world. And if we definitely want to make sure that we have a generation that is trusted to be able to lead change, a generation that is enlightened, a generation that can be able to take opportunities, a generation that is able to speak for themselves, and a generation that is able to make sense, we need to start molding them now. And the way we mold them as at now is very key. You see, when I, when I was a young child, I was very naughty. Very, very naughty. My mom can actually attest to that. But if there was one thing my mother taught me was that I have to become a responsible person whatever it takes. I was not beaten. I wasn't beaten by my mom. Till date, if there's something wrong I have done, my mom will sit me down and she'll tell me, hope you have done something wrong. And because you've done something wrong, till date I'm punished. You are going to do this and this and this so that you can realize your mistake and then you do not repeat it. And that is how we live with my mom. And so I am very careful not to make a mistake because I know that I am supposed to act responsibly. Are we molding our children in such a way that they themselves can actually, before they actually do something, they already have, they, they are thinking about it. And they are saying that if I do this, it's going to be wrong. But if I try and do it this other way, mom would probably accept it or my dad will be fine with it. Are we molding children in such a way? Are we letting children grow in the light of God? Because that is the most... You know, we can be talking about policies put in place. We can be talking about giving children good food. We can be talking about children going to the most expensive schools and getting the best, the best of education. But are we giving them what is key and that is food for their souls? Are we denying children the opportunity to be able to commune with God? 
Because you see, you don't even know God. Because if you know God, then you will know very well that there's a commandment that says do not steal. Right? Yes. <coughs> Are we molding children in such a way? Because if we do not, that is where we have failed as a society. All of us, that is where we have failed. Because we have diverted children into thinking that we are supposed to be thinking in line with machines. We are thinking in line with economics. We are thinking in line with, with all these other things. But we are slowly diverting them from the path of God. Which is the most important? Because if children know God, then they fear him. They will definitely do what is right with him. And that is what we need to give them today. And I hope children are listening today. Because this does not only come from parents alone. Simna Niskiza? Yes. You need to know God. So that you are responsible children to respect all of these people that are seated here today. Because parents are not just your mom and dad. But anyone that is above your age is fit to be your parent. And so you need to give them the respect that they deserve. So that your ways will be right with them. And when they bless you, when an adult speaks a blessing over your life, then you're going to succeed. But if they're complaining about you every day, mama kwa sema uwashangi vyombo, unajitafua kila siku watu ufanyi homework, kwanza yu unajua nishida itu kubwa sana watoto, it is not right. Muna nisikia? Mukwe muna fanya vile vitu ambavu muna duwa na wazazi wenyu mfanye. Sawa. Kama ni kazi kuwa mtuto mzuri na ufanye. Kwanza kama sa hivyo nyesitu nenda hafta. It is right for us to assist our parents at home. Sawa. Tuwasaidie, ndiyota wawa kifurahi, sisi mungu wata tungezea masiku nyingi kwa dunia. Sindio? Tuzeeke, tukai kama kina Abraham. Izo miaka zote. Sindio? Because you see, the Bible clearly says that, in fact it's in the commandments, that when you honor your father,